this is Michael Buckley at Side Effects, and today I'm going to be walking through uh, a demonstration of how you can use TOPS to grab a large number of geometry files and associated texture files, pull them into Houdini one by one, uh, hook those textures up to a principal shader, and cook off a render um, for each one. So. Uh, this would be a good workflow to use if you know you have a large number of assets that maybe you want to create, like let's say turntables for, uh, and you wouldn't want to have to manually do that one by one by hand. Um, so yeah, let's dive in. So uh, yeah, so I just have a project set up right now at topmap.hip, and uh, I created two folders which I'm going to place stuff in. Um, but just so you can see at the top level, this is. Um, this is kind of the scene setup. Uh, this is for doing a render with tops. You can ignore everything right now. I'll explain what everything else is doing in a bit. Um, let's just like dive into the top net. In fact, I don't even need the viewport open. It's, tops really doesn't, uh, there's nothing to really visualize in tops itself that needs the viewport. Um, so I have two, oh, let me jump back up and explain kind of where this stuff's coming from. Uh, so I've got this, uh, uh, I've got this assets folder and I've got these rocks that I got from mega scans. So in each one of these is a set of LODs. So if you see over to the right, these, um, these FBX files are, uh, they're, they're the meshes. And then I have these .jpegs and those are the actual texture files that I got from mega scans. So I have a normal displacement, albedo and a roughness and, uh, this one and this one. Um, so this is kind of just like an example of a setup that you might have. Um, there's like, basically what TOPS is gonna do is I'm gonna take advantage of like, basically the setup of the both the file structure, the fact that I have all the assets in one folder um, and the fact that there's this common, there's this common name for like everything, like everything in here is associated with this this name. There's other ways you can do this. Like I could also use this directory to kind of associate everything in here. Um, the fact that the directory names are different. Um, this is kind of one way that I'm going to take advantage of the fact that you know all the geometry and all the textures have this special name prefix. So just uh, basically you want uh, just associations. What, what we want at the end of this to to get a render out, uh, just to like break it down, is we want LOD zero, assuming these are LODs, so I mean, you typically wouldn't want to render like every LOD, but assuming that, I don't know, we did or whatever, like um, maybe you do want to uh, have turntables of all your LODs. Um, so you want to associate every every piece of geometry with all four of the texture files uh, and just do like one after another. So at the end of this, we should have, uh, so we have five pieces of geometry here, five here, five here. So at the end of this, we'll have 15, uh, different renders that we'll be doing. Um, so yeah, like I said, like the, the folder structure here is important because we're going to use that uh, to sort of get at this data. And if it wasn't like this, you would just have to do something slightly differently. Uh, Tops has the ability to move stuff around. So, I mean, like it, worst case, if you had like these files scattered all over your file system, then yeah, you'd have a little bit more work to do, but chances are that you have them sensibly placed somewhere close together. Um, and if you didn't, then you just have to do a little bit of work getting them there. Maybe do like a whole sweep of your file system and find them uh, that way. So file pattern, that's, this is like the big guy. This is like how you get files as work items. So this one is right now pointing to this pattern, this uh, rocks pattern, and put a little star here. And this is actually, if we go back up, uh, rocks is actually not the directory that contains any of the files directly. It's just the directory that contains directories that contains the the, the, the files that we want to get to. But file pattern uh, has a recursive option. So that means that it will go into the subdirectories and the subdirectories of the subdirectories until it finds some st like stuff that matches uh, this pattern here, this star.fbx. So that's, that's how I'm gonna create those, get those, at least the FBX files and uh, turn them into work items. So looks like I have 
15. Oh, maybe because they start. Oh, because they start at zero. Right. Okay. So we had, we should have 18 renders at the end of this zero to five. Um, cool. So now we have these work items. Uh, each work item represents a file. So we have this this output, which is the file, and then we have a little some other like data that just is going to go around along for the ride that this node creates for us. Uh, file name is useful. We're going to use we're going to use that to just kind of strip away this this LOD part. And what we're going to do is we're going to create like a, a key value pair um, from this. And that's how we're going to associate the, uh, the uh, geometry to the textures. That's pretty much it for just getting, getting that. Uh, this is the step uh, attribute from string. So this is a useful top um, just, for, uh, just for doing what I just said. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to use the, the source string, this file name. So that's that's what uh, file pound generated for us is this file name, and then uh, what this does is it allows us to use this kind of like this patterny like grepy like syntax. It's a little different than grep. Uh, it's not or or regex or other uh, string matching systems. It's actually simpler. Uh, what it basically does is you create these little brackets, and then in between the brackets you have some like separators, and what it does is like it tries to match. Basically, these things are almost like um, like asterisks and like, uh, or they're almost like dots in uh, regex, if you're familiar with that, or uh, or the stars that the file pattern uses. And that like it'll try and grab anything uh, that comes after a underscore and then everything before it. In the in the the uh, the variable inside of that is what it's going to create is what's going to call it's going to create an attribute called value and it's just going to assign that to whatever it matched in these parentheses. So um, so middle mouse button on the work item I can see that I now have I use the file pattern as a, the file name as the source string. Uh, I was able to grab asset rock granite l blah 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 um, and uh, lod four based on this this little uh, this last, uh, this last underscore, I was able to separate those two out. Um, the LOD I'm not gonna use, although I could, but the value is really what I want because that's like the, uh, that's how I'm gonna match up the textures to the, to the, 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 right, the right geometry that I wanna associate them with. So yeah, that's fairly straightforward. In fact, this would be straightforward too, if not for one little glitch. And this is why like naming is important and it's good to have like well-prepared data. I'll explain in a second. So same thing. I'm just pointing this at that same rocks directory. If I replace .fbx with .jpg, so it grabs all the JPEGs instead of the FBX files. And um, and I'm I'm doing this in two different. I'm splitting this off because I do want like I could you could use file pattern to grab like uh, FBX or JPEGs, but I'm splitting this off because I do want to do different processing to the uh, to the textures than I want to do with the geometry. I want to pre-process them a little bit. I'll show you that in a second. Uh, so same thing, uh, attribute from string here. Uh, there's a little bit more going on with these. And that's another reason why I wanted to split them off. In addition to this like kind of string that I'm going to use as a key, there's also a uh, an 8K there, which is you might it might be useful for you. Uh, I, I don't I don't use it, but I still have to capture it because it's going to mess me up if I don't. And uh, then I have the map type, which I am going to use. I'm going to use that for uh, doing this association. In fact, I think I, no, I don't do that there. Yeah, I'm going to use this map type to, basically, this is my, this is almost going to be my index into the, uh, the shader. So I'll know that this is the roughness. So I'll put it in the roughness slot because I have that. Um, there's one little thick gotcha here, and this is just, a total artifact of the way that Megascan set this up is the normal has an additional uh, piece. It's got this LOD zero at the end of it that the other ones don't have. Um, but we can handle that. We, what I do is uh, I have a split top here. And uh, this basically just will split off the work items based on expression. So here I'm doing a string compare. I'm comparing the map type, which in the case of the, uh, the ones with the LOD, uh, that's going to that's going to have an LOD as the map type because it basically this bit this basically got it wrong because of that extra the extra thing the other ones don't have. 
So this will match and see if map type is actually LOD zero. If it is, then those work items are actually gonna go get funneled into here. And uh, we're just gonna like basically do this again, but correct it. So we're gonna adjust the pattern to include that LOD. So the map type comes off uh, correct. And then, uh, then we're just gonna merge them back in together. So we have 12 work items once again. Uh, now here's, uh, here's another extra step for the textures. Um, and this is optional, but it's recommended. Uh, Mantra handles .rat files better than JPEGs. .rat files are like the preferred format for uh, Mantra. It's uh, optimized to use them. It can create, basically they have um, the MIP maps generated inside them already. So like car, um, Mantra doesn't have to generate the MIP maps on the fly. So it's just like, it's, it's better to create uh, these .ret files if you're, especially if you're gonna be thinking that you're gonna reuse these textures in any sort of way or use these materials, um, it's just preferred. So to sort of convert the .jpegs into .rat files, um, I'm gonna use this program called iConvert. Uh, Engineric Generator is kind of our, it's kind of our launch and external program uh, top. You know, basically for every one of these work items, uh, you'll give it a command to run. And this is just a, this is just a command line uh, command. Uh, and then I convert ships with Houdini. So you'll have access to it as long as your Houdini environment is set up. Uh, and we're going to basically pipe in each one of these, uh, these dot JPEGs as an argument, as the first argument to this, uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> to this program. And then we're going to generate an output. It's going to figure out what to convert the file into based on the extension. So I'm just going to take the the file name. I'm going to put it in a folder called Maps, which I've already made, which is going to be in HIP. Um, and I'm going to add this this file that this program creates uh, as an output file. So yeah. So when I run this, it's going to launch 12 instances. In fact, if I pull up, I wonder if I can catch it. If I pull up HTOP right now, yeah, you can see I've got I convert running and the jobs are finishing and it's going down. I was using my CPUs. Um, and now I've got this roughness.rat file, which is just better to use for Mantra. Um, cool, so now I've got all the texture maps. Now what I wanna do is I wanna kind of bucket them because I don't wanna, I, I know I need 18 renders, but I don't need like 12 of anything really. What I wanna do is I wanna kind of collect each one of these individual maps into a sort of a, sort of a material, I guess. Um, oh, note one thing I did here too, is I, I changed this, this file tag. So this little gray bit at the end, I included the map type as the, the um, what's it called? The uh, output file tag. Uh, Cause we can use this, this little bit here. This, this is called the, uh, the tag of a file. We can use that to filter. Uh, I'll show you when, how that works when we actually set up the shader. Um, so as far as grouping these together into like a single single materials, I'm gonna use our partition by attribute. Partitions are used to take groups of work items and kind of uh, associate them with each other. So uh, th what this node does is takes some attribute, we're gonna give it the key attribute that we created, which is, uh, this is this string. And we're gonna say like every, every work item that has the same key, we're gonna put in the same partition. So when I cook this, 12 goes down to three. If I click this, we can see the work items that this partition is created from. Uh, if we middle mouse button, now we see that we have, instead of just one output file for each work item, we have uh, four. And these are, each, each one of these is basically the material in uh, texture format without the shader. But it's the, uh, the textures that will go into making up the material on the shader. Uh, so the great, now we've got like kind of the materials over here and we got the uh, geometry over here. So now what we want to do is just kind of mix them together. And we're going to use a partition by node for that. Uh, uh, so this is just take all the work items from this input, all the work items here. And we do an input partition for each input work item combination. So it's actually going to do like every possible combination of these work items with these work items. Um, so we'll get 54. And some of these are wrong. Because like, uh, for instance, this one, this one's key doesn't match this one's value. 
that's why we set up the key and value system. So what we can do is just, we're just gonna filter them out. So we're just gonna do another filtering step where we're just comparing the key and value. And if those aren't the same thing, then we just throw the work items away. And this is all for free. This is all basically just like, like this, this work item manipulation is basically costs nothing in terms of CPU time or anything like there's not nothing really happening here. So it's really efficient. Um, and then we basically have everything we want. We've got the uh, geometry and we've got the, the maps associated with it. So what I'm gonna do is I, I'm gonna go back up a level. First, I'm gonna uh, do generate on this step. Generate won't actually cook anything. What it'll do is it'll kind of create like the shells of the work items that will be created by this. Um, it's useful for like inspecting like work item attributes and just seeing if like the picture make sense before you go ahead and cook, like what could be a potentially costly rent uh, costly job like in this case a render is not something that we want to just like fire off without making sure things look right first as far as making things look right first uh we can click on a work item and that will when this work item is selected what it'll do is it'll populate any parameters in houdini that are referencing work item attributes uh with the work item value of that work item to kind of show you what I mean by that, um, I'm gonna come back up here. So now we have a rock here and I'll show you why. Um, in this geometry node, I've already set this up, but this is what you would wanna do, is uh, basically to, to render something, you need to pull the geometry in, put a material on it. And the output flag is just so that this node will definitely like cook with the material applied for, to it. Um, uh, the the file basically is just referencing. It's using this PDG input expression. Um, so just to see, I'm gonna get rid of this just so you can see how it was uh, and how it'll look after you set the top network. Uh, so if you start typing up PDG, you can see PDG stuff populate. Uh, we're gonna reference PDG input because just going back here, see on this work item. Uh, the input work items are, are are these basically. There, there are there are stuff. There are geometry or our maps, um, and we want the file slash geo. We're going to use this tag to specify which one of these input items we want is what we want to go in that file salt. So coming back up here, I'm going to do PG input, and this uh, once you open the first parentheses, you'll get a little description of how this works. Um, Basically float is an index. We could use the index instead of the tagging system if we knew that all these all those inputs were in the right order, but I don't know that. So I'm just gonna put a zero here and then I'm gonna do a filter. So I'm gonna filter by that uh, by that tag. So file slash geo was the tag. So all the work items that don't match that tag will just be filtered away. Um, which leaves us with one, which is why zero works here. If I had multiple geo, then it would go back to using this as an index into the array of work items that match this tag. Um, and then float, uh, the last one is to specify whether or not you want the, any paths in, that, in those input files to be like evaluated or not. Uh, since they're on my system, they're on my like local system, it's okay to evaluate them to their absolute paths. Like that's if they have like things like dollar hip or dollar home in them or some other environment variable. You might not want to evaluate that. You might want to set this to, I forget if this is zero or one to evaluate, but you might not want them to evaluate that if this is working on like a non-local system or you have a farm set up. Um, and then the next thing is the material stop. So um, that's pointing to here. So that's just applying this, this material, this principal shader. And this is basically a default principal shader with um, base color texture. And here I'm doing the exact same thing as I am with the file stop. I'm just referencing the PG input and using this PG input expression to get at, to get into that uh, work item uh, input array. And I'm just, I'm just filtering by albedo now. And here in the roughness parameter, I'm filtering by roughness. Uh, I've also have the the normal map on. I didn't put the displacement on just so when we render, it doesn't take as long, but that, you do the exact same thing there. Uh, as you can see, so if I middle mouse button on this, uh, even though it didn't look like that work item was selected, it's kind of gonna, 
it's kind of going to cache the last worker that you selected and evaluate that. Um, so you see this is evaluating to this expression you can evaluate because I had that work I'm selected. It's evaluating to the, uh, the proper texture path. I mean, it's kind of nice because before I even render, I can go into tops. I can kind of like, I can kind of click through these things and just, just make sure that they're all, they're all working at least in OpenGL before I uh, have to do a mantra render on them. Um, and then the, I just have a camera set up. Uh, this mantra ROP is what this is actually pointing to. So this ROP fetch, we've got a couple helper ones. We've got like ROP geometry. We actually do have a ROP mantra. These these guys are literally just wrappers though. They wrap this guy up, which is the, the actual kind of node that runs. Um, and all this is actually doing is, it's gonna run a Python script in the end of the day. Uh, and uh, it's that job is going to be distributed across like whatever whatever uh, farm nodes or cores you have available, depending on whether or not you're using a farm schedule or a local schedule or a mix or a mix and match of those two. Um, this is just kind of pulling back to like these commands. This command is like pretty much the same as uh, like the command that this this guy runs. Like at the end of the day, these the tops basically is is there to kind of wrangle your data together in sensible ways and establish dependencies. But at the end of the day, you're just, you're just running like regular like process commands. Uh, uh, some of them happen to use Houdini, but others don't. Um, and that's, uh, yeah, that's basically it. If I, if I cook this off now, then this would start up, uh, you know, 15 mantra renders, which I don't want it to do because it'll, it will get slow, but that's uh, that's basically a setup.